Hi, YouTube. I hope you're having a fantastic evening. Um, drink waters, eat potatoes, eat Dorito chips. I hope you guys are doing well. Come join us on Twitch. You guys already know that, like, I don't do a Patreon, but pretty much do the entire reaction here on Twitch. Then it gets edited and takes time, and, you know, and later it ends up in YouTube. When we're talking about psychology, we're talking about if the individuals just, this is for any series out there, but I kind of want to point it out again, because some people are like, ugh, you're, you, you, your psychology has to be based on the time that they're in. I mean, I don't even know if there are psychologists in Moshiko Tensei bros or made an abyss during that time, you know? Like, I, I gotta fucking clarify this for y'all. When we're doing analysis, it's not like we're in here doing emoji reactor shit, dude. If I wanted to be an emoji reactor, like, it would be a 10 minute video or 15 minute video and I'd probably be like, hey guys, welcome to the channel, boom, boom, fireworks everywhere. Hey guys, this is how we're gonna do it, you know? Like, so on and so forth. Like, we're not emoji reactors, a lot of this is quite literally like psychoanalyzing pretty much everything that we can uh, through a psychological lens, through a perspective that if we were in therapy today and this was being addressed, this is how things would turn out. This is what would happen in a society, like through a sociological perspective, this is what we would look like. But that being said, let's just get into it, man. Isn't he... Isn't he too weirdly calm about all of this shit? That's quite literally like a big... juxtaposition in, like, what's happening. I.e. like, oh yeah, this is absolutely wonderful. There's a hole in the ground, you know, I can... Go to the restroom there, everything's totally fine. Oh yeah, no, like they're they're giving me food. Oh yeah, I'm in the safest place on earth, and it's uh, there is no war in Bossing Say. There is no war in Bossing Say. Like if you keep saying it a lot, I'm sure you're gonna believe it. So I'm wondering if this is either gonna be A a comedy bit that's gonna end up with him being like, yo, what the fuck? Or B, if he's like, it's rent free. <laughs> Bro, to be honest though. To be honest, if it was, yeah, that's some that's some big cognitive dissonance. I'm, I'm, this is going to be a little comedy bit that some that I just ruined for myself for whatever reason. Where you're probably going to be like, yeah, right, it's free real estate, or two, like, it's it's like he's so powerful that he's literally just chilling, like he can escape at any time, but he's more than likely just waiting. I don't know, more to to be saved or some shit, you know? Like when you're when you're that powerful, how does that go? <laughs> anyway. Ah, I... I always do this to myself. I always do this to myself. I stop one second. I, I stop one second. <laughs> <laughs> I stopped one second before, uh, uh, before it's due, dude. Before the punchline. I always do this to myself, and that's, oh. Yeah, dude. Uh. Alright. I'm hearing the, uh, audio here. I uh, should probably turn back into this. Here we go. There you go. I, I, no, I can't, man. I can't see the future. I wish I could, but. Although, to be fair, doesn't he have a thing for, like, beast people, so automatically he's sort of in a better state? Bruh. Bruh. Okay, before, before we go on, you guys know why they do this? There, there's, there was actually a study d done on this, like, I think quite a while ago. AZ. <laughs> That's what I was about to say. Um, do you guys know why, like, for example, certain prisons like this are sort of isolated, uh, clothes taken off? It's, it's a form of, like, you know, dehumanization, right? It's a form of torture in, in I guess, the most basic psychological sense possible, right? Because if you start losing pieces of who you are, i.e. clothing is identity as well, right? Like, you can put a lot of emphasis as to what type of clothing makes you you, makes you grow. Um, 
even though some of you guys I know wish that was you, trust me, if you saw a bunch of people that were constantly staring at your dick, right, or you naked in general, um, and being thrown water at random times, uh, not being able to go to the restroom in a humane way, uh, being in a bed full of lice or other little insects and shit like that. No, Mock Thing, please don't don't spoil. Like that's probably the best way I can put it. I'm sure that they have it for their own creatures or whatnot. Because it, it I mean, if they have fur or whatever, it probably makes sense. But in a situation like this, it's quite literally like, yeah, no, and that's exactly why why I was going for. All things considered, he's taken it quite well. And what I'm thinking, right? <laughs> Unless you're in an exhibitionist that really likes, uh. Yeah, uh, unless you're an exhibitionist that just really likes getting uh, water thrown on you at random times or, you know, nasty food and nasty bed. You really like uh, role-playing into situations like this. But no, I feel like he has the confidence that he's more than likely going to get saved in the situation. Um, and the, the, the main purpose why I was bringing this up is because, again, narratives, guys. Uh, that's sort of the number one thing that that I like to bring up is what... What travels quicker, right? A story about what you've done or the truth? And this goes into any relationship. Whenever you've broken up with some, someone, um, usually there always tends to be a, a push towards like a bad and good guy scenario. Um, yeah. So rumors will always usually spread out first, no matter how truthful you can be, you know? Rumors defy the laws of physics in most aspects. Yeah, it's weird. Like, people have this weird gossiping sense. But the reason why it's important to know that is because by the time that, like, let's say that the truth does come out, how will, the, will, will society or will this culture change enough to accept it? Or will they have to play along with it? Is there going to have to be an inciting incident in order for people to actually start looking the other way? You know? So, like, specifically with that, like, if it comes out, that's, that's me knowing that I have to eat something. If it comes down to, I don't know how to put it, you're in the society and they let you out for a couple hours a day, you're still treated as absolute garbage, um, what needs to change in order for people to start looking at you? Or in your own society, in your own friend group, when all of a sudden these rumors hit them and they start treating you like absolute garbage, or they start like distancing them, uh, themselves away from you. Are they your friends? Or were they only there for the convenience of what friendship could be? Was it true friendship? Or was it just the interconnectivity of being like, Oh yeah, we're friends. I've been wondering this. I, I've been genuinely thinking. Sounds good, easy. I've been thinking this for a while now. What's going to happen to him? Whenever, I don't know, he's by himself. If the party ever disbands, what will happen to him? Like, I, I do this whole thing with attachments, right? With everyone, every character. What happens when you have all your attachments close? What happens when all of them leave? My allergies, bro. What the fuck? And that's sort of where my mind is heading. Now that he doesn't have all of his attachments, but he knows that people are coming, he's comfortable. No, no, no. Like, right now, he still has hope, but what about in situations where you're just completely left by yourself? I.e., if there was no expectation that others were going to come and, and help him, or save him, right? I.e., and it, it, like the disbandment, like, because you could put disbandment in a good way, disbandment in a bad way. Disbandment in a good way, you already know that in the future there might be scenarios where you can bump into it. Sort of like if uh, Rosie Chen and Brady and I were just like, hey, you know what? We'll keep working on our own stuff. We'll come back together, whatever. It's, it's a, like a good disbandment. If it was a bad disbandment where like people are hating on one another, there was all this toxicity and shit like that. Where does that grow? 
you know, how does, because that can cause feelings of insecurity, that can cause feelings of abandonment, uh, specifically with some people, right? Because like some people, for example, your girlfriend doesn't text you, your partner doesn't text you for a couple of days, and you guys are like, breaking up with me <laughs> they, they, they don't they don't care about me like you know it's all of this like anxious attachment uh that, that happens you know like it, it's it's okay like it's not shitting on anyone it's quite literally pointing it out like anxious attachment is a very very big thing and it's a prominent thing especially when like something really bad happens that's sort of what trauma is formed off of so like for example, when, this is the only reason why we don't focus on the good, because good continues, a healthy dynamic, a healthy relationship, and for people to change, i.e. all the times that you've grown in your life, the, all the experiences that you've had, all the changes that you've gone through, have all gone through tribulations of failure, hitting yourself up against a wall, like, you know, a problem kept coming up close, and you're just like, ah, that frustration, um, coming in short, so on and so forth. Um yeah, that's sort of how you tend to go through these big changes in your life, you know, making big decisions where you're like, hey, I have to take this giant ass step either by myself or with a group of people and so on and so forth. This is how like the little situations like this is how we grow, right? Friends can definitely help us grow. Right. Why am I throwing this out there? Because, like, for example, if I was having a really shitty day, I'm to like say like a really low mood or I'm an actual full full out depression. You know, friends can really help you pull pull you out of there, pull you out of the hole. That makes sense. Be like, hey, you know what? You're better than this. Why don't we go ahead and go out? Like, let's get you going to a club or something. Right. Having friends is really important. Uh, especially when it's like a relationship trauma or any any type of major trauma. Relationship trauma. If I was in a relationship with someone, they broke my heart like really, really, really badly, or I was like sexually traumatized or something like that in the, in the relationship or coming out of the relationship. Friends can only go a certain point. How many of y'all we all y'all can attest to that? Like, i.e., I'm pretty sure your friends are not gonna necessarily heal your sexual trauma. They might heal like the aspects of like socialization. They might feel they heal the aspects of yeah, I mean, being alone with your thoughts can be amazing. They can be absolutely great. Self-talk is one of the, the ways that we heal when we talk to ourselves. It's how we heal, right? That that helps that helps a lot. Just being there talking to your friend, even talking to yourself, that self-talk heals a lot. Like it allows you to go ahead and process emotions, allows you to process your internal thoughts. Granted, that can sometimes be toxic because you can have like negative self-talks a lot. No. Yeah. But as long as you keep yourself in check, or you have others to keep you in check, it's good. I fucking knew it, dude. I'm like, there's something in the air tonight. Huh. But, sexual trauma. What heals sexual trauma? Anyone want to take a guess? Self-talk is based, man. Yeah, self-talk is really based. Anyone want to take a guess? What what heals sexual trauma? There's a couple of things. One, a therapist. A sex therapist, specifically, that can help you, like, maybe find the core issue. Number two. See, not necessarily always time, Jack. You want to know why? Because sometimes that negative schema that you have will literally penetrate itself deeper into your own little world building that you have going on. And there are people that are 40, 50, 60 years old with trauma from their 20s, sex trauma, that they now keep spreading on to others. Like, hey, you shouldn't be doing that. You shouldn't be enjoying toys. You shouldn't be with this partner. You shouldn't be doing that because of their experiences. And it's like everyone experiences life different, you know? <laughs> uh, that's a good answer, though. How about this, guys? Finding a partner that's genuinely open to you, right? And why am I saying this? If you have a partner that is open in the healing process with you, i.e. open to your trauma, open to being like, hey, you know, you don't have to take on the world to you by yourself. Like, you can, like, you know, because a lot of people tend to, like, I'll put it, like, rescind, go back into their, their own, like, oh, everything's like, you know, the world's out against me or whatever. But having a partner there for you, 
that's genuinely open for you and open to talk about your trauma and open to talk about likes and dislikes and open to say, hey, you know what? I like it when you do it this way or how can I best make you feel better? Or so on and so forth. Like having those open conversations, it allows the opportunity for individuals to heal from trauma that is based on that, you know, because like in therapy, we can do like psychosexual interventions. We can do so on and so forth, but it's not like we can, I don't know, beat you off you know get you there and be like huh so that's what you do does that make you feel better type of shit no i'm sorry dude i don't want to touch anyone that's my first opinion but i'm good bro i'm good you know but like everyone else you know you have a partner you tend to find the partner sometimes even by yourself by self-exploration by finding out what feels good a lot of people sadly nowadays tend to go into the medicinal aspects of things and tend to like be like all right i'll just plop, pop a pill and i'm good and it's like, but are you really healing from that? Or are you thinking that just because you're hard, you're good enough to go to, to do, to do what you need to do, you know? So that's sort of like how sexual trauma can develop off of that, off of attachments. And it can really develop off of anything, even shaming, i.e. shaming what is good, shaming what is bad, so on and so forth. So bringing it back, I know this is a long ass point, bringing it back. Why am I bringing this up? Because trauma happens in every aspect, shape or form out there. What do you mean? I am so confused, man. I'm literally going off of like attachments, you know, good, bad, bad. Okay. Attachments broke up bad trauma, normal trauma, sexual trauma, normal trauma. Okay. Well then, you know, there's aspects where self-talk can help. There's aspects where individuals around you can help. There are aspects where you can go ahead and start like, I don't know, even going into the socialization aspect again, maybe even finding a way to go to like work, school, whatever it is to try and heal. That's one aspect of healing. Oh, sexual trauma based, i.e. based off of sexuality, based off of, I don't know, beating as meat and it not being good enough or having a bad experience overall, someone poking fun at his leaner. I don't know, anything off of that. These are the ways that that can heal from. How does, it, how does a person grow from that, you know? Todo con medida, nada con exceso. Exactly. Everything, yeah, everything in good measure. Exactly. But that's the point. And it's like trauma comes in many shapes and sizes. And sometimes that projection of the trauma that we had, this is something, okay, I'm about to go, fuck, uh, ah, ah, okay, ah, I'm about to go on a fucking rant for a second, guys. A lot of people do not understand. A lot of people are quick to judge, right? I.e., like, for example, you can have sexual trauma, yeah, and present itself in a way that is not healthy, 110%. Let's take that into it, right? If you have sexual trauma, like, for example, Rudy does from his previous life, a lot of shame, a lot of whatever built into that. It's like this, dude. Quite literally, in his previous life, he was restrained from sex in general, right? So he did, he was like a sexual deviant. Deviant happens, uh, it, it would be considered anyone that does not follow the normal norm, the normal norm, well, the normality of what sex is, right? So what happens when you tap someone from experiencing what sex is and restrain that sexual nature to a point where they feel shame interacting with others, maybe even themselves in that manner, i.e. the only way that they actually express sexuality is through jerking off, but like not really actually having someone there to participate or talk about, right? What happens? Anyone care to take a guess? You become an even bigger sexual deviant when you have the opportunity and the openness to right? Because it's there. It's accessible. Because people aren't being like, hey, you know, if you're going out on a date, guess what? You should set up boundaries. There should be consent. There should be things. There are people that are quite literally told, like, you know, they're held back. All of, There's a lot of sexual repression, a lot of energy, a lot of whatever held back, held back, held back. And then boom, all of a sudden, you're in a world where no one talks about any of this shit. It's open. What happens? You sexualize fucking everything. Is that a good thing for today's standards? Absolutely not. Don't get me wrong. That's a fantasy world. This is reality. In reality, you need to ask for consent. You need to have your boundaries. You need to be able to address yourself as an adult in this society. In a fantasy world, this is sort of already exploring. Yeah, this is exploring sort of what repression does to an individual that when they come into another world and there's no fucking boundaries and there's nothing like that, how does he go rush into the situation? What trauma does this cause? Where does he go? Where, where, that's what I'm saying. Whenever I talk about Rudy as, as a character specifically, 
It's like you've seen a lot of the twists and turns, i.e. he's starting to set up boundaries by himself, um, you know, with in the previous episodes with Air specifically. He's starting to learn and grow off of situations like that, you know, so on and so forth. Like, it, it's, it, it's wild. It is absolutely wild to think about stuff like that. Um, anyway, sorry, guys. I got, got a little, little long-winded there. I apologize. Let me, let's keep going. Hold on, wait a minute, wait a minute. I gotta get a good look at his face. Am I tripping? Am I fucking tripping right now? Am I tripping? No way, man. No way, am I fucking tripping? Am I tripping? Am, am I... Am I tripping? Give me a second, guys. I'm fucking tripping. I'm tripping so hard, dude. I am tripping so hard right now. Am I tripping? Guys, okay, I'll, I'll bring it up here. I'll bring it up here. This. Not what I wanted. These chrome. Am I tripping? I don't even have to do that, I don't think. Am I fucking tripping it? How the fuck do you zoom in? How do you zoom in? You meant... Bro, okay, am I tripping? Because it's just lame. We've already seen the dwarf dude, right? We've seen Paul, yeah, yeah. We've seen this girl. <laughs> We've clearly seen a lot of this girl. I'm telling you, bro, I have a fucking... Is that... Bro. Bro. I'm trying to zoom in more, but I can't. That's as much as I can zoom in. I just remembered the fucking outlines, man. The outlines. Bro, my, my head hurts now. I hope you guys know my, my head hurts from connecting all those dots. Oh. Control scroll. Okay, control scroll. Got it, got it, got it, got it, got it. Yeah, let me get there. Let me get there. Let me get there. Getting there. Getting there. Give me a second. Oh, let's back caca now, but all right. No, uh, no, no. Yeah. Okay, guys. Okay. Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe it just fit the it just fit the description that I think like my mind. In case you guys don't know, in case you guys are like did some like weird fucking sorcery, uh, like Eric Cartman fucking voice on me, you know. Uh, it, essentially, what I end up doing is like I end up putting different information, like you know, important information into like a different memory banks. So, i.e., that picture, quite literally, put it like a picture frame of Wolverine. Holding it, like looking down on a bed type of thing. You, I, you can create different memories and put specific information inside of like a house or whatever. It allows you to access information quicker and keep a big storage of information, right? So it's one of the memorization tricks. Yeah, literally a mind palace. Literally, it's an information trick um, to keep as much information as you can there. So no, it's nothing fucking groundbreaking or anything like that. No, I don't have like, you know... Like the Wolverine meme. Yeah, like stupid shit like that. You gotta have something that allows you to go ahead and like pick up information, you know. Um I don't know, dude. I don't know. If it it hmm. Hmm. I need to be trusting though. That's the real I know Dakshimetra Kokoni Butchkomaretano sa Senpaika Uasani not the Daze Dordiano Sejuga say no kimono new so are that te Darega Umaiko Yeto. 
He's doing the one thing I tell you guys. Did you guys notice that? I... Are, did you, are you guys noticing this? Yes, Bonfire. Exactly. No, he's mirroring. He's quite literally doing it in order to quite like break in and be able to have like a good set. He's mirroring the other person's behavior, their uh, physicality in such a natural way that if you don't pay attention to it, it just goes by quick. It's just like, oh, okay, he just shifted his positions, right? But he's trying his best to mirror without making it all like on the top. So this makes me wonder so many fucking things because only a person that either A, can get information rumors or whatever out there um you know it's been doing it for a long time uh no not just asking for a name like specifically mirroring body language yeah 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 it, it's so it's so like look i'll even play it back man he, he was laid down he could continue talking like this the entire time yeah yeah and then look 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 he, he quite literally mirrors rudy in order to be able to break in look boom it was dice what about you boss switches over to mirror because at this point we're in the same level all of a sudden we're not you're not talking down to me we're talking in the same level you know oh shit like you know type of thing this is wild dude this is wild you see you see you see you see <laughs> yeah mark tank i'm glad i'm glad you picked that up as well bonfire as well you guys you guys can pick that up i'll give you guys fucking golden stars for picking that shit up yeah yeah so when a person does this you know and if they're not like psychology trained you can automatically assume you guys are insane like you can automatically assume that people that do this uh there's a purpose for it uh people like people will do this naturally while in bars and sessions or whatever if they want to go ahead and build that rapport that bridge with another person you mirror another person's body language when you're talking with them could be not not the entire thing please don't be a fucking creep and mirror every single little thing but just the little things the little aspects of communication you know like you can pick up on one trend or shift your tonality to like match theirs match the same height however you want to go ahead and do it but people do this naturally in a way to try and be able to get in however people that do it yeah, people that do it, um, logically thinking about it, they're usually information hunters, i.e. they're able to go ahead and get information quite easily because of this, like, whatever uh, system that they created. But they can also be some of the most manipulative, untrusty individuals out there, i.e. the narrative that they're spending in front of you might be a good character, but maybe they might not necessarily have the best intentions, i.e. they might go ahead and be like the world's best whatever and like give seem to everyone else, but deep down inside they might be doing some other shit or planning for some other things. That's why you always got to be careful a little bit. Bruh. 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 Everyone likes to give crap to Rudy, but nobody wants or Rudy is, but no one wants to go ahead and be like, yo, this particular scene um could have gone pretty bad. Could have been pretty bad. Imagine Eric see I imagine anyone fucking imagine anyone of your family walking in and seeing like someone on top of you like that. You're butt naked and they're like doing it. Hi Nicolabia, thanks so much for following, man. We're so close to five hundred. I really appreciate it. You're the best, man. You're the best. Okay, dude. Okay, dude. Ba basic rules of intimacy, yeah. Uh, it, it, especially with the young kid, bro. If well, this is this will even sound wrong. I don't even think I should say this one. But bro, you don't whisper into someone's ears while you're on top of them and they're naked, bro, bro. Like. <laughs> <laughs> bro come on come on now come on now <laughs> he's just giving you a uh, present sent by you ever heard of a uh... never mind i'm not gonna yeah it's all so don't worry about it i scare myself sometimes
But this time he didn't do it. Don't tell me. Do not tell me. This society, this clan. Completely forgot that, hey. You know, if we kill all the people that, um. You scare us sometimes, too. No, 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 like. Don't tell me specifically this. You know how they took out a bunch of the smugglers? Don't tell me that they just completely forgot to put their defenses up. I.e., yo, the smugglers took the kids from a place before. Where do you think they're going to go looking? Um, I don't fucking know, Ed. Where do you think they're going to go looking? Um, evil Ed, huh. I wonder where they're gonna go. You know, probably the same fucking place where they took him from. Hello? It's either the cause I don't think Eris would do something like this. Or or Rui. Come on, guys. Like they're they're too they're too nice. They're too nice. They wouldn't do some shit like that. Mock tank, but were they all killed? That's the real question. Cause at some point I'm sure someone out there has to be running the Ford business. It's more complicated than that. I mean, it can be. It could just be another fucking warring faction or something, you know? But I'm just thinking, man, like, the first thing you, you do immediately is you buff up security, like... <laughs> Are you guys seeing that, or is it just me? Am, am I making a big fucking deal about it, or is it just me? Entire time he's been there, he's been asking these leading questions. Who, Rudius? How are you getting out? Like, like shifting the pressure on him to make a move. Like, he's not, like, you know, we'll be roasted, yeah, but, like, he hasn't been in real trouble asking, like, the, how are you going to run away? How are you going to do this? How are you going to do that? Like, I don't know, dude. Yeah, it, it's it, it, the, the way that he's leading the questions. It's the way that's, yeah. Mm, I don't know, dude. So something's not hitting right in this in this situation. Because anybody else, like, you know, you'd be like, you go into prison. What's the first thing you try and fucking do? Escape, right? But the way that he's been leading it, he's been way too fucking calm about it. Mirroring the body language, doing these, uh like, motivational interviewing questions. You're a little too quick for that. Yeah, the, the guy, the new guy is sus, dude. Yeah. Uh, yes, yes. I think the new guy is sus. Good or bad. I think he might put on a narrative that he's a good guy, but I don't know. There might be some, some weird shit happening there, man. Just random humans or what? I'm done. And you guys are like, no, nah, no, nah, can't be, no. Nah. I'm fucking done, dude. It's too many fucking years. It's not them necessarily. <laughs> oh. oh, I'm fucking done, man. That's hilarious. Oh, it's TOS happening soon. Okay, okay, I'm gonna go ahead and hide the screen then, real quick. Uh. Think about that frame again. It's like he's. It's like a weird test as well. You'll never get a better chance to run. Normal person will never get a better chance to run. Just throwing that out there. Yeah, when, when we're talking about shit testing, you, even in the wording like this, you can you can tell, man.
you can really tell that he's growing, dude. Like, as an individual. Because, yeah, like, previously he let someone die, and now he's like, they'll owe me, you know, that type of thing. But, like, you can really tell that, like, Rudius is really, like, starting to adapt certain things. Here's what I'm scared of. Change just doesn't happen overnight. Granted, there's been shit and months and time that's been happening. But you will relapse in your progress for change at any point. Yes, Xerxes, finally. I'm glad I'm not the only one that's fucking freaking out about this new guy. I'm fucking freaking out because he's, like, he's been way too calm, way too, like, everything that he does is just so, like, fucking, like, methodical and planned and shit. I don't know, dude. <laughs> I don't know, dude. But yes, Rudius has been growing so much and, like, being able to do certain things, and I'm just wondering what a reset or a step back for him would be like and how that's going to take place for him as a character happens to any character any person actually um you know we all go through them uh anyway we're getting close to the tos time <laughs> not the same guys could be from a different organization no it you know the ones from the basement it's not the smuggler it's not the same smuggling bro come on guys yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> I swear, guys, the majority of this, like, it's actually logically based. Y'all have seen me do the logical examples of where we're going. I blame horse face guy. There's so many connections in here. It's it's great to see. I think just overall the setup. The setup was there. The setup was nice. The setup was beautiful. That's way to put it. Uh, but anyway, anyway. All right. Uh, fourteen forty four. No. Oh, the TOS is now. Okay, we might be. For, for those of you guys that wonder, hey, why do you put so much emphasis on, like, yeah, it's safe. Uh, why, do, why do you guys think put so much emphasis on, like, the sexual aspects of things? Because it literally takes one fucking moment to cause sexual trauma for life. Like, I, even groping, dude. Like, imagine if someone went up to you and just fucking uh, grabbed your nuts, yeah, and dipped it in that fucking uh, Koso, like, uh, how do you put it, that, like, male's contraceptive thing where you dip your nuts in the water and it takes away your sperm, you know? What if they just grabbed it and were like, bam, like, you know, deep spermified or some shit, you know? Or so on and so forth. Like, you know, any form of grabbing, touching without consent, so on and so forth, can cause trauma. And that's, like, the very much the big, the big importance around that, you know? Why we bring up these concepts. And sometimes, heck, even sexual frustrations, like, i.e., uh, wanting to have an extremity of multiple partners while not necessarily claiming to be a, of the lifestyle can be brought on from trauma, dude. Like, so on and so forth, you know? That's why I'm saying, like, it is really important to note and dictate sort of the differences as to what's happening, why things happen, where they happen, and, like, the important, like, bring up the, uh, like, aspects in a good discussion, you know? Like, hey, sexual trauma can happen. Trauma can happen in multiple ways, you know? Yeah. Bruh. Are you really okay with this? Are you really okay with this? Crazy, we're both in the same fucking situation, but are you really okay with it? Are, are you okay with the situation, Crazy? Are you not gonna do anything, Crazy? Crazy, come on. Are, are, are you, are you gonna take this chance to escape, Crazy? Are you gonna do this? Yeah, Crazy. Bro. This guy is giving me so many fucking red flags, it's insane. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, and that, that's... That's that's sort of the thing, it's like, you know, really pushing in on, on, like, trying to see... I don't know, it's like a weird shit test, dude. But, like... Yeah, it, it's weird. It is weird. 
聞いたわよ北西をぶっ飛ばしたんでしょサルガオのやつが興奮して言ってたわよわずいだわずい北西にすまなかったまさか子供たちを救い出してくれた恩人とはつゆ知らずこのギネスいかなる罰を受ける覚悟だ<laughs> yes, all of a sudden, like by the end, it's like we did it. I don't know, dude. That guy's really sus. I'm, I'm, I'm confused on that. I o i t e n t s o t e s o n o n i k o o t o n d e s o s i m p a s i m a s t a y o m a k t a n k no, 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 no. It felt weird. It felt weird because specifically, it's like he, it's like he was a third party observer pushing the decision on the kid, right? Like. He would like, if you think about it, like an adult watching a kid try and fight another adult and being like, what are you going to do? And like, whatever he ends up doing, he ends up siding with, i.e., knowing sort of like the power structure and shit. I don't know, dude. That's weird. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Rudy, Rudy, that's that's that, that's almost kind of cruel, dude. That is so fucking cruel, bro. No, because you know for a fact that, like, I don't know, others may have been fucking transported as well. That's cruel, dude. You don't know the situations, bro. That's that's rough, dude. Like, Im imagine this: the whole world gets transported, right? And me and fucking bonfire. And his family are all together. We all get separated. I end up with bonfire, you know, throughout the entire time. And then I'm like, hey, it'll be so glad to tell your mom when you're home. Bro, we all got separated. I don't fucking know if she's alive, is she dead or whatever? Like, bruh. Actually, how do you even brace for a conversation like this? Like, hey, we, we might have to go find your family or whatever, you know? Like, yeah, it, it's. I don't know, man. It's fucking weird to throw it out because he was like, I don't know. He was so over the top. He was such an over the top character, genuinely. And the majority of the times, his laughter was like, I don't know how to put it. His laughter was so was so big that like it encompassed like his whole personality. But like he was so protective. I mean, technically, her dad, in a way, was too. Is her dad? Yeah, because you can't necessarily say grandfather without bringing up dad and mom, right? And in this, wait, wait a second. Wait a second. Wait a second. I gotta process some shit here, guys. Guys, hello, guys. If this incident happened in this location, who is to blame? Who is to blame for whatever happened? Especially if it was like a, you know, as big as it was with Roxy checking the name and shit. All the names. Bro. Yeah, I, I, I wouldn't. I don't know. I guess the first thing you'd start to do is you'd start to have grief talks or talks about self, self expectations, i.e., your priority should be putting yourself and getting yourself home. First, before being able to regroup, before being able to say, hey, you know what, let's go find mom and dad and grandpa and grandma and all of that shit. And not having weird expectations of like, hey, you're coming back. Why didn't you bring everyone back home with you? No, 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 no. Quite literally, it has to be an expectation of you getting home safe first. Especially in a big incident like this. This is weird, man. My, my mind is like, oof. <laughs> Oh, your kingdom already looks corrupt as shit, man. Where are they? Let me go back a little bit. So, 
Bro, you have like the like I don't know, like stereotypical like noble and like their bodyguards and shit. What are we getting introduced to here, dude? Also, is that an Alfier? Bruh. No. 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 <laughs> no. No. <laughs> no. I'm fucking done. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm done, dude. I'm done. No. I'm sweating, dude. I'm fucking sweating. Holy shit, guys. I'm fucking sweating. Oh. Guys. Give me a second. Give me a fucking... Give me a second. Give me a second. Give me a second. No. No, 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 no. Hello to all of the lurkers and everyone watching. Hey, we're doing a psychoanalysis of MT. We're almost done, technically. We're close to the end. No. No, 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 guys. No. No. What? I, I will spit my thoughts. Let, let, give me a second. Give me, give me a fucking second, gentlemen. Give me a second. It's not true. It's impossible. I gotta do this like in a side by side thing, I guess. No way, bro. No way. No way. <laughs> no way, dude. Fuck, dude. Bro, no way. But shit, no, it can't be. It can't be. That's... Unless they pulled like a Rui trick or some shit. Come on, the hairstyle. The hairstyle. Bro, look, look, the, the little strand behind the ears. Yeah, yeah that's, why, that, that's why I'm like. I'm, I'm dismissing it now, but the hairstyle is so similar. I'm fucking shocked, man. Anyway. I got my hopes up, man. Yeah, I got my hopes up. Unless it's like a... Cause it doesn't necessarily have to be like hair dye. It can, it can literally be like stress and trauma sometimes. They can quite literally make your, like your hair go gray or some shit, you know? So, like, it doesn't have to be uh, certain shit like that. I don't know, man. I got my hopes up. Now I'm kind of crushed. <gasps> I don't know, Mark Tank. Didn't the whole fucking, like, region got separated and shit? <laughs> yeah, man. I, I got my hopes up. Now, my, now I'm kind of fucking crushed, man. Oh, I, okay, I don't, Masters, that is not a good excuse. I am fucking sorry, but let me step on in here. That is not a good excuse to argue, because why the fuck did uh, Rudy S. and Harris end up in, like, the demon continent? Plot? Fucking plot, dude? Uh, I don't know, dude. Like, yeah, I got my hopes up so hard, because I was, I was waiting, I was waiting. I've been waiting to, like, I don't know, see if maybe she'll pop up. Hopefully this season. <sighs> Oh shit. I guess his dead Yeah. I guess his head did come. That is a horrible joke I made earlier. I think one of the earliest episodes when he was introduced. Oh. Oh, that's a rough joke. Oh, bro. My heart hurts a little bit. In one of the first episodes, I said a really dark joke about him, sort of like laughing his head off or something. Or like, he seems like the type of individuals who's like... I should consider it, but am I going to do it? That's a different question, Punyash. Uh, That's a lot of trauma, dude. First off... First off... I don't know how else to put it. Like, can you imagine finding out, like, finding this shit out? Like, that's huge, man. Finding out that your grandparents, like, passed away. Finding out, like, yeah, laughs his head off. That's sort of what I said a long time ago. Thanks, thanks, Shin. <laughs> like, I said it in one of the first episodes. I'm like, oh, yeah, he'll probably laugh his head off. Or, like, he's probably be so angry that he blows his head or whatever, right? Because I was talking about emotional 
like deregulation, especially how he acted. And then having this scene happen, dude, my heart hurts. That wasn't a joke I should have made. <laughs> That's a kind of funny dark joke, though, if you're into that. But like, fuck, dude. Fuck, that was such a good episode, though. There was a lot to go ahead and analyze about that. Anyway, with that being said, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys were a part of the all the entire fucking wild ride. Um, I don't know how else to put it, man. That that was fucking wild. I you guys can tell I get stuff wrong. I jump to conclusions a lot. Uh, but that's sort of what it's about, especially when psychoanalyzing certain aspects. Uh, being able to bring in certain parts that are good for us, and you know, we can go ahead and dive in deep. But anyway, thanks to some self-care, guys. Uh, join us on Twitch. For those of you guys that are on YouTube watching this later, uh, best way to do it. Yeah, you get the full full craziness that happens here. Anyway, have a good night, guys. Uh, for those of you guys here on Twitch, how are you guys doing? Are you guys doing okay? You guys holding up okay? Jay Nay, how, how you doing, brother? You doing good? You doing good? Doing good. I'm glad, man. I'm I'm glad. Yeah, I was about to say, hey, yeah, that was a phenomenal episode. That was a really, really good episode. Uh, Lil J Ron, thanks so much for following, man. I really appreciate it. Uh, it really helps the channel grow, I guess, in general, the community grow as well. But with Buenas tardes, como estás, uh, David? How about we do an 86 months now, guys? Uh, oh, doing well. Found your video on YouTube and going through a meeting of his content. Been binging a bunch of your stuff. I think the longer content is super interesting. Oh, well, I'm glad, man. I, I'm really glad, Archeron. Um, I, I don't know how else to put it. But like, I, yeah, I'm glad that you were able. First off, how much did you binge, man? I'm fucking terrified. Like when I hear that some of you guys literally binge like the entirety of like ReZero or like caught up with the majority of the Moshko Tensei episodes, I'm sitting there and I'm counting. I'm like, that one was like two hours. That one was like an hour 30. I'm like, fuck, dude. That's like a full day of sitting down and just like listening to like the crazy fucking theories and psychological perspectives and whatever that's thrown out there. But hey, if it's helped you like learn and grow and appreciate the characters a little bit, I, I, I'm all for that, man. I appreciate it. I appreciate you you watching that. Yeah, especially if you're a writer, it's really good to understand that. It's really good to understand the characters and how they're growing, because you're able to grow with them as well, you know? Uh, I opened up the playlist and saw two plus hours, and I was like, what? <laughs> what well, Archeron, okay, straight up. Because there's so many people that do, like, reaction videos to, like, anime and shit, and it's only, like, 15 minutes tops, or 20 minutes tops, right? Uh, they have, like, the 10-minute timer of the anime, and then it's, like, 10 minutes worth of discussion if they don't have a skit or something for their, their channel or whatever. Oh, I'm glad, AZ. I'm, help I'm glad that I'm helping you out, at least understanding characters in that way. To be fair, those videos go fast. Hey, I'm glad, man. Uh, they could just be put in the background. True. True, a majority of the time you can go ahead and put them in the background and hear me just talking for hours, which I even get annoyed at my voice sometimes. <laughs> time to binge ReZero reaction? Bruh, prepare yourself. Okay, if you watch the Moshko Tensei reactions, uh, Deca Libia or whatever, Deca, I'm not, your name is now Deca, man, for me. If you watch the uh, like Moshko Tensei or any of the other reactions, know that quite literally all I did was like incorporate that knowledge into ReZero because a lot of people were like, you're jumping way too quickly. We can't follow, you know, A through Z. So I'm sure you'll be good. Like, it'll be, it'll be easy to understand. But hey, guys, I really appreciate you guys. Uh, I am going to go to bed because I have to wake up quite early. <laughs> Appreciate each and every single one of you guys being here. Follow if you can, guys. Hey, you guys will get notified when we go live tomorrow and on Thursday. I really appreciate y'all. Have a good night. Practice some self-care. Drink some water and follow some of the streamers that we have, you know? Have a good night, y'all. I love y'all. I'll be back tomorrow. Stay safe. Bye.